Welcome to another episode of Combos Court. We have my friends in the building today. Blaze French. Yes, sir. Alex. Chris. Before we get into it, though, I'd like to hear more about Distinction. Because the people got to know why you're here, Alex and Chris. The people got to know. We'll get to Blaze later, man. Blaze, <laughs> Blaze has been a friend for too long. Absolutely. <laughs> but Distinction is a marketing agency. We work with athletes, creators, and brands. Founded in 2018, but really scaling over these last couple of years. Focused on the intersection of the creator economy and sports. And uh, fortunate to work with a lot of great athletes in different sports. And creators like Blaze, he's an early OG Mm, believed in us OG Blaze. believed in us from the beginning and we've grown together and obviously become friends and chris is our vp he's been working with us for oh, i think over three years now yeah. and it's uh it's been a hell of a ride and just grateful for for good people all right chris so i'm gonna hit you with a tough one since you're okay. here man this is uh big time for you you're on combos court man how you oh, feel God. now where do, where do you see it all trending though how do you see things changing over the next few years when it comes to influencing when it comes to influencers when it comes to branding yeah i think brands are just looking for ways to to interact with audiences at a more deeper level and i think you know using creators you know especially in the sports creator economy is something that is really going to benefit brands and you know kind of using their audience to tap into a, a new audience for the brands themselves and attract new consumers and you know really just get the brand out there in a lot of different cool ways yeah yeah blaze <laughs> no it's interesting because um i was watching alex speak in paris shouts to athlete Panor, and i was the only guy that got to ask him a q a question so i kind of wanted to ask you the same thing since you are an influencer and you know everybody calls themselves an influencer these days but i mean you got you know over five m's on on instagram it's a you know it, there's levels to this right but my question <laughs> to you is you know, if you already have a relationship with the brand, how do you nourish it? How do you take things to the next level? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and I don't consider myself an influence. I consider myself a businessman with influence. Like I think Jay Z has. A lot Is it of one influence. of the things you do? Would you say? It's who I am. I would say so. Not one of the things I do. It's like I've always had influence since a young kid in elementary school. I would influence people to say things and eat certain foods and stuff like that. So okay, it's just becoming now like a title and stuff like that. Um, but with those relationships, when I go to events, when these guys you know send me uh, to a Great Goose event or something, I just make myself very personable and kind of leave a lasting impression. So mm. they really want to work with me and not just take pictures and pose and say, you know, buy this. So it's a, you know, personality kind of thing and just being cool type shit. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the taking picture stuff. It, there's so much more that goes into what you do than just taking pictures. What's the nice. biggest, what's the biggest misconception when it comes to influencing? I think, um, yeah, I think that right there, I think um, brands and people think that I guess maybe a picture is going to make your brand go through the roof to the moon. Um, you know, I worked with a sports drink company, Body Armor, for 10 years, and, you know, we took millions of pictures, but that wasn't the reason why we got a $5 billion acquisition. It was the events we were doing. It was the people we were touching. It was the everyday grind we were doing. So that's, um, you know, how you grow brands. And do you, do you like that life before? The Body Armor was yeah do you like the the body armor life or the life you're living now like what's more interesting what's more fun for you i mean because well, i remember you i remember the old blaze man not everybody knows <laughs> blaze was he was he was doing everything for like sure. he was outside you know yeah those, those were those were good times man that was uh my previous life i mean i learned a lot from it it was so much fun definitely more pressure now um but I, you know i wouldn't want to be anywhere but you know on the couch with with you guys on combos court right now you know yeah Alex, you know, NIL is such a big thing these days. Um, how do you f how do you talk to athletes when they're looking for brand deals? Should that be the focus? Should playing be the focus? I know you're on the branding side, so how do you handle all that? Because I feel like coaches and players should at times try and keep the main thing the main thing, right? Yeah, and I, I think the main thing has to be the main thing because if you're not on the field, you're not on the court, those opportunities in an athlete probably aren't going to exist unless you – have a brand like like this guy and, and have that notoriety and following. So I think the main thing, the main thing when it comes to like college NIL and, and now you look down even high school, I mean, it's, it's sports, but it's also academics. You got to be eligible. But then it's also, you know, like where do you want to take it and how many brands do you want to work with and how big do you want to get? And some people, you know, are happy to 
you know, have a couple deals, make a little bit of cash, but keep that focus, you know, fully on the sport and in their academics. And there's others, they want to be business moguls and they want to be known for what they do, you know, off the court. And maybe that becomes even bigger than who they are on the court. Um, we just saw, we were at a Bloomberg event yesterday and um, Deja Kelly, guard for Oregon, was speaking about her, her portfolio and how, she, you know, NIL started when she was in college. She was a sophomore at North Carolina and like the opportunities that have come to her, are amazing. And she may or may not play in the WNBA, but she's worked with tons of notable brands, has equity in companies, like she's become a, a business magnet. So it's a huge opportunity, but you have to be playing be eligible, all those things, you know, have to check those boxes. It can't just be content, events, and social, you know. And how does an athlete know that he should be looking for NIL deals? Is it the social media following? Is it how good he is as a player? I'm sure it's all of it combined. But when's that point when a player, a talent should know that, oh, I should probably be looking for an NIL deal at this point? It's a little bit of everything, but I think the secret sauce and where people come to us is when the they secret sauce. That's what we want to hear about on Combo Sports, <laughs> man. The secret sauce is like, all right, <laughs> I'm here. How do I go from good to great? Like, what am I going to do that's going to take me to the next level? Maybe that's higher quality video content, having good editors, Ooh. you know, having, you know, people behind you. Like, I always like to say when we're pitching an athlete, we're not the contract agent, but we'll be their marketing partner. You want to have a board of directors around you. You want to have that that lawyer, that accountant, that marketing team, those editors, like you want to have all those people on your team, the same way you're building a basketball team with a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, you need that group around you um, to be successful. So distinction focuses on the deals for you, right, Blaze? And you get a lot of the posting done. Do you have a machine behind you? Do you do it all on your own? <laughs> like, how does that work? Because you built a really nice Instagram page. Yeah. Um, you know, like Alex was saying, definitely having a team, those editors and everything. And, um, you know, I I like to bring value, though, like as a influencer or as a creator, um, there's a lot of brands that I send to Alex and Chris as well. Like, check this out. Um, so you want to kind of bring something to the table and not just kind of wait for these guys to call you, um, which they will call you and have deals for you. <laughs> but you, Put that you, in there. You, you want to be proactive, though, you know what I mean? And, and, and kind of send things, you know, their way as well, um, you know, because they got a lot on their plate. So uh, just try to bring things to the table. It's interesting you say that because I feel like once somebody gets an agent or once somebody gets somebody looking for deals for you, some people just lay back. Yeah. And I remember this uh, story that Cameron was talking about when he was working with Rockefeller. He basically built his own studio within a closet and yeah. started taking calls. Yeah. And I think like that is so important for when you are even when you're being represented to be proactive, right? Like, Blaze, you were always a person that was proactive. Absolutely, yeah. I, I watched that Cam episode a million times. Mm -hmm. I, I fuck with Cam heavy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just that proactiveness, definitely, um, you know, because that's the people that they want to work with. Now they're going to, you know, work harder for you because you're bringing in things for them as well. So um, you always want to be proactive. And I think going above and beyond matters. Like, from our standpoint as agents, like, when we'll call him with an opportunity, there's deliverables, right, that we have to do, right? So maybe it's a Instagram reel and a few stories and show up to this event during fashion week. But he'll do extra things, right? Like he'll go above and beyond and get on the call with the, the manager or make an introduction or give them a couple reposts and extra stories. And that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I see that all the time, like the, the guys and girls that do the bare minimum versus the ones that go above and beyond, there is a difference in the amount of deal flow and the amount of ultimately money that they make. And is it college athletes that are having this issue? Because I feel like, you know, Blaze is a, you know, not old guy, but you know, you've been through it. You know, he played he's college vet. basketball, he's yeah. a vet. Like, do you, do you see college athletes being proactive as well or? Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> it's a mixed bag, but I think they're learning, right? It's mm -hmm. the same way as, you know, when I was an intern, you know, in my first internship or my first job out of college, I didn't know how to deal with things the way I do now. And it's just about ultimately having that experience, having those people mentor you. Um, I've seen it even with Chris, like where he was three years ago versus now, I mean, it's completely different. So I think when you talk college athletes and it's just learning, 
but but some have that extra go getter mentality. Um, so it really just depends. But ultimately, who you are when you're 19, 20 years old versus in your 30s, you know, is very different. Yeah, but I think though it's it's a correlation. Like when I played basketball, you know. I guess I wasn't maybe the most talented, but I was coachable and I would just do those extra things to get on the court. And the same thing with brands, you might not be the biggest influencer, but if they like working with you, they'll work with you more than someone who has a bigger following. So it's that correlation there, you know, to the basketball court. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a way different time, even since when you were playing with the transfer portal, NIL deals. Yeah. Hell yeah. Is this sustainable the way college basketball is these days and what could we do how could we make college basketball better it's a loaded question yeah, right that, <laughs> that's combo i mean you got you guys are in it so that's yeah. what i'm asking well, you. like i, I you don't guys... think it's just college basketball i think it's college sports as a whole because especially in college football right now some of these rosters at, at certain schools and i know ohio state's been reported so i'll use them as an example <laughs> they have 10 players at least 10 players making over a million dollars from their collective, not from brands that guys like us are bringing, from their collective of boosters funding that team. So right now, to have a top, you know, Division One football team, you need 15, 20, 25 million dollars a season. And then you talk about the transfer portal to get a top quarterback, it's a million plus, you know. To and that changes get, the dynamic. To get Cam Ward to Miami or DJU to Florida State or whatever it might be, like, it's crazy. So is it sustainable? I don't know, but the business of college sports is massive that you have to remember, like, it propels everything. The reason I wanted to go to Florida State was I wanted to go to a big sports school. I right. wanted to have that football experience, you know, that big campus in the South. Like, that is the biggest marketing arm that universities have is their sports programs. And, you know, when an FAU goes to the Final Four in basketball <laughs> – Everyone's like, where's this school in Boca Raton on the beach? <laughs> Application, shoot up. Florida Gulf Coast yeah. or St. Peter's yeah, even. Absolutely. Shout out to Peacock. How, how does this money change the relationship, Blaze, between players and coaches? Because, you know, as I said before, it wasn't this way when you were playing college basketball. Yeah, I think uh, it's like semi-professional or yeah. as, you know, professional, you know, as a college kid get. And um, that's super interesting, that question of how does it change the relationship? Because I guess if you're a college athlete and you're making a million dollars and a coach kind of tells you something and you may be making more money than he is, you know, <laughs> you might I guess him. that's the NBA dynamic yeah. in a lot yeah. of instances. True. But but also in the NBA, I feel like they're grown men. So it's a level of respect. Yeah. Where a college kid is. 18, 19 years old, and then his coach is 45 years old. And, you know, so that's a little... Well, there are a lot of 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Not a lot, but there yeah, are a good yeah, amount yeah. in the NBA, yeah, too, though. True, true. Yeah. How do you, so what's going on with uh, high school sports, Chris? Like, yeah. are, are they? Are we having pro high school athletes now? Because I heard there's some rule changes in Florida, right? Yeah, what's just going, passed. Yeah, so what, what's going on? Di different states are creating NIL laws when it comes to high school students. So we're going to start seeing high school kids being able to get paid through their NIL you know, doing these different brand partnerships, building up their socials. And it's it's going to be interesting as the more states go and do it and, and seeing, you know, who gets paid ultimately. Is there friction between you guys and the coaches? Like since you guys are, are getting the deals for these athletes and, you know, because some I feel like some coaches want to keep it the way it used to be. Yeah. You know, I think there's that old school mentality, but those guys are retiring or leaving the sport, I think. If you want to coach in college athletics right now, you need to realize the importance of NIL. And when you talk even trickling down to high school, I think it's imperative that high school programs, whether it's individual high schools or the districts, the counties, that they bring in people to talk about NIL. You know, they educate these student athletes and they're, they're careful about the deals they're getting into. There's a lot of clauses and terms and contracts that like, I don't see how a high school student would know what it means. And if their parents don't have the means to have a lawyer behind them, like it's it's very dangerous territory. So I think it's it's critical even at the high school level, you know, for schools to invest in education, um, whether that's legal teams coming to speak with them, agencies coming to speak with them, brand executives like that education has to start earlier um, because if not, like it's, it will be a mess at that level. Do you feel like there should be more programs implemented so kids learn about 
NIL deals. Coaches learn about NIL deals. Um, you know, in other countries, to become a coach, you have to go through a program. Do you feel like that should be the way it is for kids now? I don't know. It's, yeah. it, it's tough. Yeah. It, it's really hard to standardize everything because of Chris's point, like every state has different laws and different rules and restrictions. But um, I, I just think education is important and, you know, putting resources out there and, and investing in them. Blaze, how, what has been some of your most memorable, memorable moments when it comes to influencing, especially on social media and with everything you're posting? I would say, um, and just to go back to that last point, though, because I want to say, you know, because I'm teaching, I'm a professor now at college. I think that the curriculum needs to change um, in terms of NIL deals and social media because um, these kids are not so familiar with it. And that's why I like teaching because I want to, you know, get them familiar with it and educate them on how to use it. Um, but in terms of the most memorable moments, it's been so many good ones. I like, I like, I was talking to Alex about this. I like the um, opening pitch. Yeah, that that right there thrown. How'd it go? I don't remember how it went for you. How'd it go? It uh, went good. Yeah, well, I'll tell you a story though. Like I, I shot the Mets a DM. I said, could a Queens kid throw out the first pitch? And I was just shooting in the dark. And uh, they said, yeah, which game? And I, you know, picked the the first game available. And I had our our good friend Lawrence uh, oh, yeah, catch the out. pitch. <laughs> oh, that was so, dope. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he dropped yeah. it, but. That- <laughs> yeah, you know of that's the tallest that, 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 that's the tallest catcher Ever. in the history of baseball yeah, yeah. my man is like 6'10 <laughs> um i wanted to shift to um alex's favorite team the orlando magic oh, man. man there Let's we go, go. Let's go. <laughs> so my thing is you know they always talk about batman and robin <laughs> but i don't feel like there is a batman and robin on this team i feel like it's penny and shack 2.0, not in terms of the way they play basketball, but I think there's two Batmans. You think so? Who, who are the two Batmans? I know Franz Paolo. and Paulo. Franz. I don't even know. I didn't even. I asked Alex the other day who was Franz. I didn't even know. Oh, you didn't even know him? No, nah, I didn't. You, you must not have watched the I Olympics. guess. I guess. <laughs> which team he was on? I guess they need you to start branding because no, if Blaze don't know about Franz, he needs your help, Alex. So. <laughs> <laughs> Paolo and Franz, and we, we've been talking about this a lot, um, the, the Magic are set up very similarly to the Celtics. And before you laugh, the two what? best players are 6'10 forwards who can handle the ball, shoot, rebound, defend. Okay? Alex, Alex, I totally yeah. disagree. Yeah. I listen, totally disagree. Because wow. you know how good of a shooting team the Celtics are. But, but listen. That's their biggest weakness. I, I Hear me. Okay. The Magic were second overall in the NBA in defense last year. Yeah, Minnesota was first. Boston was third. Coach Mosley did a great job with their defense. The Magic added KCP, one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA, to that backcourt. Starting with Jalen Suggs, one of the best young defensive players in the league. <laughs> so you got Suggs and KCP in the backcourt playing similar defense to Drew and Derek White. You got the two young forwards slashing on the wings. And their draft, they just drafted shooting. Tristan De Silva switched him in for Joe Ingles. So he's ready. He's just ready to this He's going to come minutes. in on the bench. This is why he is the best agent. You see how he's selling the magic? I'm just saying. <laughs> Imagine team, what he could do for the you. The team is simi- a similar <laughs> dynamic in build. They're young. They still have cap space. They don't have any egregious contracts, anything like that. They have a ton of young assets if they wanted to package for a veteran. <laughs> the the future's bright, man. And Paolo, he has so much attention on him every game. Like if you watch the Cavs series, they're cued in on him. They got two, three guys. He goes game seven to Cleveland and still almost drops 40 points as a 21-year-old. So you're saying he's Batman? He's Batman. <laughs> Not Franz? Franz is right there, though. That's you what got, I'm saying. You can have two Batmans, though. I mean, Tatum and Brown, it works. The media tries to break it apart, but it works. Brown was Batman for the yeah, playoffs. That was best Wasn't Batman. he, Chris? No question. <laughs> Wasn't he? But I think that's what great stars do, is they switch the cape sometimes, though. It doesn't mm. always have to be me. Look at Miami. Nah, with Pippen and Jordan, big, we knew. We knew with Pippen We knew Jordan, Alex. But LeBron, <laughs> LeBron and Wade would switch that, that cape all the time. Uh, towards man. the end? Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I think you don't need a solidified, like, I'm the guy. No, I don't. Yeah. I think if it is one, it's Paolo. I think he's about to have another huge leap this year. I think they're both going to be all-stars this season, though. So what do you feel like he needs to do to take that leap? Shooting. Absolutely. If he can get to 40% from three, it's lights out, man. Yeah. He's a mix of 
his body, his game is a mix of Carmelo and LeBron. He can pass. That's tough. Yo, this guy. That's, that's tough. 6'10", six, six, 250. A combination of Melo and LeBron? I mean, I like Paulo, but wow. <laughs> yes. So is he a threat? Uh, is this the biggest threat to your Celtics, Chris? No, it's, it's funny. Alex and I love talking hoops. We, we can talk hoops for days, but when it comes to the, the Magic and Celtics comparisons, I, just, I don't even think it's in the same ballpark. You know? like, that's, <laughs> I think you might be right. how I look at it. Like, but I do think he but, brings but they're up trending up points. They're trending up for sure. Yeah. And yeah. they got some young superstars that are going to be in this league for a long time. They went from 22 wins, 34 wins, 47 wins last year, 55 to 57 wins this season. Book it, whatever. So who are the biggest threats to that? your? Yeah, <laughs> we'll put a lot of this. <laughs> who are the who are the biggest threats to your Celtics, Chris? I mean, I know he's talking magic over here, but I think it's the New York Knicks. Yeah, yeah. They I add mean, Mikel Bridges. The, they the, got the Nova Knicks. Come on, I know. On, I know. Blaze with the the Nova Knicks. Come I mean, on. I definitely see them being good this year, but I mean. The Celtics building off what they did last year. Like, I mm. think they could repeat this year. You know why I like the Celtics? Because it's human nature to become complacent once you win one. But then what happened with Brown and Tatum with the Olympics? The snubs. Brown gets snubbed. Tatum doesn't get burned. So they not only have the experience of winning one, they still have the chip on the shoulder, which I think and is. I, I got to give a shout out to Joe Missoula on that one, too. I think he's installed a culture in this organization that it's only going to grow from there. He's He's been awesome. Did you think Tatum deserves playing time on the Olympics? Not necessarily because it's only a 40-minute game and their identity was LeBron, Steph, and KD and which players fit around those players the best. Yeah. So I'm not – I wasn't mad at him not playing. No. Like. And also, he wasn't shooting the ball great. I think Derek the, White was shooting I think it better. The bigger snub wasn't Tatum's minutes, but the fact that Derek White got a spot over Jalen Brown. But he to was me, the, that was crazy. So before even there was a whole thing with Jalen Brown, and Derek White. I said on Combo's Court that like Derek White would be the perfect fit for this team because you don't need any more stars. They have yeah. enough star power. Yeah. Right. And, and his defense. And I think the other thing, though, is like I would have loved, and I'm not just this is not just a Paolo take, but I would have loved to yes, see a young see guy <laughs> get that 12th spot. The way they groomed Anthony Davis early in his career when he Chet came Holmgren, right out of maybe? Kentucky, Chet um, Cooper Flag, he was cooking anyway. Yeah, in the, uh, I would have loved to see somebody like that in that role, and it could be even a guard for that. If you know, we're looking at Derek White as the one taking out, but I would love to see them groom that next generation of. You knew he wasn't going to get a lot of minutes, but yeah. So how are you feeling about your Knicks, Blaze? I'm feeling very, very excited. I mean, <laughs> being a New Yorker, you're excited every year, but definitely, you know, Jalen Brown, Jalen Brunson, not Brown. We could edit. Don't worry. We yeah. could edit. Jalen Brunson. AI can make you sound good. Don't you worry. Know what I mean? <laughs> Julius Randle. <laughs> You know, the Nova Knicks, the rest of those guys, not nah, super excited, man. And, you know, last year we lost to the Pacers. That was super unfortunate. I think Tibbs kind of ran those guys through the ground. And do you think he needs to do something different in that regard? I mean, I think bringing in Mikel Bridges and just, you know, OG was hurt and just kind of getting ready for this this year. I think we'll definitely go further this year. Um, you know, championship most likely, but we'll see, you know. To me, that's the biggest concern with the Knicks is the he needs to take the gas off during the regular season. He wants to win every single game. In January, he's got these guys playing 43 yeah. minutes a night to yeah. beat uh, the He'd have a the same problem. Team. That's why they're always beat up. You yeah, know, I, yeah. I think as long as you are in the top four in the East, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw the home court last year, game seven against Indiana. It didn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Damn. I know. I hate to bring that up. Yeah, that was tough. Man. I, I wanted the Knicks. I really did. He knows. I've, I always had a great time when I've gone to the Garden. Definitely. I feel like they're, if it can't be Orlando, I'd be very happy to see the New York Knicks <laughs> succeed go. and win. Yeah. Um, the other team that I, I think we're all sleeping on mm. is, we just brought them up, Indiana. No one is talking about them with Philly, you know, adding Paul George and – all this, but Indiana got great experience last year going to the conference finals. And, you know, Halliburton's only going to get better from that Olympic experience, learning from those guys. Nemhard, Turner, like those are young guys who can play. They could beat your C's, Chris? What do you think? No, nah, I don't think so. Not, yeah. I'm not worried about Halliburton and, you know, beating the Celtics. Yeah. None of us are worried about the Sixers, though, right? No. no. Fragile. I, just, <laughs> I was talking about this the other day. Why, do, why does everybody say that um, PG's the third guy? What is that? Yeah. I mean, I love Tyrese Maxey, but is he the third guy already? Is that uh, Joel Embiid's health? That's what's the biggest concern to me. Like, I don't think he could stay 
healthy. I I, I hope the best for him, but yeah. I just don't well, see it. You got winning the whole thing combo. Man, that's tough. I, you know what? I, I've always been the, like, the Celtics fans hate me, by the way. <laughs> but I do think for that reason, like, the Celtics even have a better chance this year. You think the Celtics? Yeah. I think Tatum's kind of messed up. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm oh, that really, ju- you think he got the yips with that jump shot? I think just going into the postseason, he didn't have a great postseason. And then going into the Olympics, like. No, uh, no one repeats either. Yeah, like, that's true. It is very. Are Bucks the sleeper? Are the Bucks the sleeper team? They're the another Bucks. one that I forget about them. To be honest with you, you got Damon Giannis. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if Dame's over the hill yet, but the Bucks, <laughs> the Bucks are scary. Like none of us even mentioned yeah, them, and sure. they could beat everybody. Honestly, Dame's not over the hill, man. Did you watch him? I, in, said, uh, I said I'm not sure yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You know, I gotta have hit you with a strong take after you hit. The, the, <laughs> we haven't even talked Western no, Conference. I was, yeah, we have it. But um, I know it was the only only the All Star game, but you guys were out there in Indianapolis, yeah. like watching him just the way he moves, even though nobody was playing hard. Like he still got yeah. it, man. That guy still. I think he was going through a lot off the court. I don't think he wanted to be in Milwaukee. That's interesting. A little adjustment. I don't. Don't you think he wants to win a chip and then playing with Giannis gives you that chance? Definitely. Yeah, I I think he's adjusted and. They're gonna have a much better season, but I think it was a tough move for him. Like, yeah, yeah. I think his family was still in Portland for a while, and yeah. I don't know. I, we've been to Milwaukee once. There's <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot out there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've been to I don't think, beer, right? Beer and cheese or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went to the finals a few years ago. Bucks, oh, Bucks, Suns. Yeah. So, Blaze, are you concerned about Julius Randle's fit in with these Nova Knicks? You know what? I wasn't the biggest Julius Randle fan, honestly, like of his game and stuff. But um, I think that, you know, with the Nova Knicks and everything, I, if he just plays the role right, like we don't need Will him. Will he do that, though? That's the question. There's one ball. Yeah, we don't need him And that was Batman. our point with the Olympic team, Alex. There's one ball, and you wanted Jalen Brown to be there. I think the Knicks need to move Randle. A lot of people are saying that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that, too. For who, though? That's always the question. Yeah. And who, like— no shade to Julius Randle. Who wants Julius Randle? Like, what type of team wants Julius Randle? I'm just asking. The like, Orlando Magic. Let's no, go. no, no. We're like, good. We're good at Paulo. Yeah, no, yeah. No, That's no. a weird fit. Paulo frauds and Julius Randle. You know what team Julius would fit in well? But the two teams would never trade with each other. Miami Heat. They'd yeah. love that guy. He's yeah. a grinder. That makes some sense. Yeah. yeah it would that be makes good some there. sense. But yeah. the Heat and the Knicks aren't dealing with each other. You need other. the proper spacing around him. That's what makes it so tough. And then you don't want to put him on a rebuilding team. And then is he good enough to be like a one or two guy on a contending team? I don't know, man. Yeah. What do you think, Blaze? Well, front court help. Maybe yeah. Dallas? Dallas Mavs? Wow, yeah. That's not a bad fit. You got Kyrie, That's not a bad Luka. fit. That's not a bad Clay fit. Clay and yeah. Julius. You got, like, him, <laughs> I found him, a team for him. Him with a rim running big like Derek yeah. Lively? Yeah. 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 That's a good five. Yeah. 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 Who you like out in the West, Alex? I think it's OKC this year. I think they learned last year. It's going to be tough to beat those guys. You know what's under-discussed? SGA was the best playoff performer. Yeah. See? Better than anybody on your Celtics. Mm-hmm. He's better than Luka because Luka was banged up a little bit. Kyrie had a tough finals. SGA was – he was tough, man. He was tough, yeah. yeah. He's a hooper. He's a, just a pure hooper. Yeah. So. I'm going to give you a take. In the next two seasons, so this coming season or the next year, we will see OKC in the finals one of the next two years. And we'll see Orlando in the finals one of the next two years. Oh, okay. See, I, I could definitely see it. <laughs> Clip it, save it. You know, yeah. book it. You know, you guys are experts on branding. And if somebody <laughs> if somebody says you're not, then tell them to talk to Combo. But anyway, so the next phase of the NBA, there's a lot of discussion about this, right? Yeah. Is it Wemby? Is it Ant Man? If you were the powers that be in the NBA, who would you push? And on top of that. Does the person take that job, or do you feel like it's pushed upon them often? Anthony Edwards is definitely the face, and he's going to just take the job because the way he's he seems like a guy that would take the job, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I feel like you take it, but mm-hmm. the one caveat I think to this face of the NBA is the league. It's is, Paulo. The, no, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. But the league is so international now. And there's such a global focus that I think it could be Luca or Wemby, but I would lean more towards one of those international players, um, just with where the league's going. Even though it's an American league, yeah, 
I still think when you're talking face of the league, and it comes back to winning too. At the end of the day, like if these Celtics guys go win a few more rings, then it's them. But it's who's is it? Win. I don't know. I don't see Tatum as the face of the league. If he has three or four Tatum. rings, hell it'd be different. no. You're not a big Tatum guy, Blaze. Yeah, I mean, I because you know the Mamba mentality. I think that. He's not tapping into something. I think like there's some untapped the potential factor. there. He doesn't the have the it factor. factor. A little swag, like. And Edwards has the it factor. Definitely. Yeah. Can he win with Minnesota though? Can he win? With, I think so. Yeah. I think good. the Rudy problem is is what, kind of an issue. What improvements did they make this off season? Anthony Edwards. Yeah. He got He's gonna keep getting. <laughs> at that age, you get better at such a fast I rate. Agree. Yeah. And then you know the same point to your Tyrese point. He played with Team USA and did good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a fair point. And he's shooting more efficiently. Yeah, he's tough, man. I think it's just it's tough for me to see a ton of upside with Conley and Gobert and like those guys. Like I need to see more in Minnesota. Mm. Like when we talk about internal development, right, and players getting better, OKC has that runway. San Antonio has that runway. Where's the Minnesota growth besides Ant going to come from? You think that the Magic could beat the Timberwolves <laughs> in a seven game series? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you think they could beat anybody? No, but the matchups. Absolutely. Orlando has guys to throw at Edwards. Suggs, KCP. <laughs> I'm telling you, in the forwards, who, who in Minnesota is going to D up Paolo and Franz? Rudy? <laughs> oh, he said Rudy. Ru- Rudy's <laughs> the worst multiple time defensive player of the year we've had. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, he's. <laughs> He has his straight. He's been getting like played out of playoff series. He didn't get burned down the stretch of the Olympics game, but that's partly because they had Wemby. Yeah, <laughs> Wemby's better than him already. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. When you watch, you know, how NBA players brand themselves, do you feel like there's a lot left on the table for a lot of them? Absolutely. So a guy I thought was doing a really good job on YouTube was Matisse Thibel. He was doing behind the scenes vlogging. I think there's so much upside for younger guys or guys even on the bench to show the NBA life, their hobbies, their interests. Like Russell Westbrook kind of changed the fashion game for a while in the mm-hmm. NBA Yeah, um, with the tunnel walks and his fits and his branding. And so I think there's so much room, especially for those, you know, guys who are a little bit off the radar. Um, I just think you can do so much with it, but you got to buy in and want it. And I think part of the difference with the NBA is like the guaranteed money is is there it's astronomical that like getting them to want to do things that maybe require extra time effort investment you got to get the buy-in i mean you see it with the podcasting now with like pat bev and paul george like they're getting there but i still think there's a lot of room to go pat bev took his took his talents to israel that was interesting shekels shekels (laughs) Shekels. <laughs> yeah. That's that's you know, his first overseas experience is probably a lot different than this one. Like yeah. he said they're treating him like LeBron out there. <laughs> I like Pat Bev, man. Yeah. He he talks the talk, but he can back it up. Like he can make an impact. He's an interesting fellow. I like Roan as a battle rapper. Like I used to yeah. watch those battles overseas. Who is a Roan? His his co host is a crazy oh, battle rapper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's he, he he's a smart guy. That's how he gotta start. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Blaze, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self knowing what you know now? <laughs> I was about to say something crazy. But <laughs> That's probably the reason why I asked that question. I saved you. Yeah. <laughs> what advice I give my 18-year-old self? Knowing what you know now. Um, I probably, I'd be telling the kids this all the time. Um, at St. Peter's, we used to get these financial aid checks every semester. It would be $2,500. Um, and I remember... We got our checks and we went to the Gucci store and bought Gucci belts, old basketball team, running down the hill with the Gucci belts and stuff like that. And um, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> shit we liked. And um, at that time, it was like 2011, Bitcoin was maybe roughly at 11 cents a coin. So if I would have put that 2,500 into Bitcoin, I would be at a, a I would be a billionaire. I probably wouldn't even be sitting here on Combo's Court right now. No, you probably would. Maybe I would, but. I'd probably be off the radar though. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I would definitely. Oh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you think if you had that type of money, you wouldn't be as much in the public? Yeah, definitely not. The goal is, is to like be low key. You, you, you know, you don't want to be famous. Like that's not, the goal is not to be famous. The goal is kind of to be wealthy and comfortable. But I guess in the short term, fame has its benefits, right? For sure. So you yeah. got to use it, you know, as a tool for sure. But 
definitely want to be low. I've key. actually talked about. Go ahead, Alex. No, I was just gonna say to to his point in the beginning of the show when he talked about being a businessman with influence. Yeah. Like I think that is a huge part of of his success, and honestly, anybody making moves in this industry is like, it's not just what you post or what you make, but like being able to get in these rooms with people that you can't like buy your way in. Like yeah, you have yeah. to be invited and on the <laughs> list, Absolutely. and then you see, you know, this president and this athlete and this yeah. celebrity and this rapper, like. The influence is huge, yeah. and you don't always get that direct ROI, right? Like sure. we, we talk about like being out in Paris, and yeah, we have certain deals for the Olympics, and those are done, and you get paid and move on. But there's so many other tangible benefits that maybe come three months later, six months later mm-hmm. from from being there. So the the influence part, I think, is huge. Absolutely. And can you add on to that on how you're able to have that type of influence and you know, he said, like, you can't buy your way into that. Yeah. So how do you go about that? Um, I mean, just growing up in Queens, like, I always was, like, a networking guy. You know, mm-hmm. my Italian uncle, Mike Rapoli, um, you know, I asked him a bunch of questions and kind of got familiar what with What he used him. to tell you? Um, no, like, when I first met him, you know, my teammates were sleeping because they didn't really care about, uh, you know, beverage guy. Um, but I just thought he was super interesting. So I was just asking him questions and kind of shooting him ideas. You know, my uncle's Irv Gotti, so I was trying to get Irv a deal with vitamin water and just kind of just being an entrepreneur and being creative. Um, I see a lot of brands, they want your ideas, right? So, like, so many people just sit back and just wait for people to call them. Like, if you come up with a, a campaign on your own, like, yeah, I want to do this, that, and have a vision, and all they got to do is say yes, like, make their job easier, you know what I mean, instead of them having to come grab you out the bed, have a black car waiting for you, pamper you up, tell you where to sit and stand. Like, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta hustle, you gotta be be working hard. The wheels are always turning. Always, man, it's a fact. <laughs> so what's next for you guys? What's next for Distinction? What's next for Blaze French before we get out of here? Man, it, for Distinction, it's just about scaling and growing and continuing to, to do good work while we grow and scale. Starting a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we're going to leave that to you. But <laughs> but no, I mean, it, expanding our team, our client roster, and again, not forgetting where we came from and the quality of, of service we're providing. Like That's something that's very important to me. Um, and Chris has said this to me before, but I, I like to be in the trenches. I like to be out here. You learn in the weeds, in right? In the streets, yeah. mm-hmm. seeing the clients, you know, meeting with you, like not forgetting that as you grow. I think sometimes, you know, companies grow and, you know, everything increases, but then you kind of lose the, the blueprint and DNA. There's a new set are. of problems as you grow, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not forgetting who we are, but continuing to grow in this space is exciting. And I mean, there's so much happening um, in the creator economy and sports. I mean, they're, they're growing industries, definitely not dinosaurs, and it's it's exciting to be in it. Blaze, so you're just gonna fall off the map? Like we're not gonna see you in a few years? That's what it sounds like your plan is. Well, hopefully, hope hopefully, you, you know, I'll be good. If you don't see me, that means I'm good. <laughs> yes. I know. I worry when you don't answer the phone. I, I, I'm gonna I'm I'm send a postcard from the beach. I'm gonna be good for sure. But uh, next we got um, I just. You know, put on a new hat. I um, just got yoga certified, so now I'm going to be teaching. Oh, I got to pull up to pull to a class. Please do, man. And where is it based out of? Um, well, I did it with Core Power, and they okay. have studios like all over the city oh, and dope. stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely come. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's, yeah. it's great for basketball players, man. Yeah. I, I definitely want to get the younger kids in and get them more flexible and stronger and stuff like that. So, um, that teaching classes, uh, working with Prime Video, working with Allo, uh, GLD. Um, I'll be out in LA a bunch. Um, so By just, coastal blaze. That's a you fact. Heard? Yeah, until yeah. I'm off the mat. Oh, then yeah. <laughs> no coastal blaze. No coast. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. guys. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Blaze. Thanks, Alex. We're we out. Appreciate Peace. you.